Today on Rock the Park, a sanctuary unlike any we've seen before. Can you imagine being a prisoner here? We're diving head first into a whole new world. You want to talk about going off the beaten path? This park will take your breath away. As we're starting to move through the water, you see this dark, ominous figure starting to creep towards us. Oh. And it all starts right now. Woo! I'm Jack Stewart. <laughs> and I'm Colton Smith. We've been buddies for years, and we love exploring the national parks. It's all about packing up a car and just doing it, just hitting the road. Our goal is to visit every national park in this country. And when you go off the beaten path like we do, there's no telling what will happen next. Get set to rock the park. Welcome to Dry Tortugas National Park, a small group of seven islands off the Florida Keys with a bird and marine life sanctuary and one of the largest coral reefs in the world. It's also a history buff's dream with a massive 19th century fort just waiting to be explored. <laughs> Today we're going to check out the Gibraltar of the Gulf. Wow, that is a big cannon. Keep our eyes peeled for the sea turtles that give this park its name. So is this the nest? And for the first time, take our exploration to new depths. All right, so we're in Key West right now. We're as far as we can go by car. Which is pretty awesome, because Key West is the most southern point in the continental US, and we still have 70 miles to go till we get to Dry Tortugas. You want to talk about going off the beaten path? Oh, yeah. All right, next stop is the boat. Dry Tortugas is one of the most remote national parks in the US. You have to take either a boat or a seaplane to get there. The 100-mile square park is located 70 miles west of Key West in the Gulf of Mexico, and only 1% of it is actually above water. Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon named the islands in 1513 for the sea turtles, or tortugas, that live here and were a critical food source for pirates and other sailors at the time. The reason they call it dry tortugas is because the islands have no fresh drinking water to speak of. So we're bringing everything we need to live for four days. The trip from Key West takes us about eight hours via charter boat, and we land on Garden Key, which is the second largest island in the chain. Our first stop, Fort Jefferson. This is the largest masonry structure in the country. The US military began building the fort in 1846 to protect shipping lanes in the Gulf of Mexico. Built with more than 16 million bricks and at 10 acres in size, Fort Jefferson dominates the island and at one time housed more than 2,000 people. This fort is huge and has tons of history. So we're meeting up with park ranger Michael Wittish, who's gonna show us around. This right here is a 15-inch Rodman cannon. Uh, the cannon itself weighs about 50,000 pounds. <laughs> wow. You could probably take out something pretty big with this thing, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It could fire about a 440-pound cannonball about three miles. So oh, it's, that's a big boom. So something that perplexes me, you're completely surrounded by the ocean, and you choose to build a moat. Uh, but the moat basically served three different functions. Uh, the most obvious thing was for defensive reasons. And that way boats just couldn't pull right up here and load their people on the inside and attack from the inside. And the second reason was just to help protect the fort during storms. That way waves crashing over the wall here would destroy that moat wall rather than destroy the fort. But it also did serve a third function. It served as part of the sewer system. Oh! But can you imagine being out here in the heat of summer with 2,000 people going to the bathroom and all ended up out there? I mean, the stench back no. in the 1860s, not Yeah, not no, no, no thanks. Well, I'll tell you this. We're planning on doing some snorkeling while we're here. It's not going to be in the moat. No. <laughs> no way. The fort is more than a half mile around with 2,000 archways, which were designed to house heavy guns. While still under construction, it was used as a prison for Civil War deserters. Four men accused of conspiracy in the assassination of President Lincoln were also interred here. Believe it or not, the fort was never finished and it never saw any wartime action. It was eventually abandoned, but now the park preserves the fort and the ecosystems around it, which is exactly what we're gonna check out next. We're gonna be hitting the kayaks to do a little tour of the island and then we're gonna stop off and do some snorkeling. All right, let's go. 
the dry tortugas are a great place to do a little bird watching. Over 300 different species migrate through here, but one of the most spectacular is the magnificent frigate bird. Their bright red neck makes them hard to miss. With their seven foot wingspan, frigates got their name meaning fast warship because they are aggressive hunters. Feels good to finally be out here. Not a bad view of the fort from out here on the water. It was cool to check it out from the inside, but now we're able to see what it looked like if you were a ship actually approaching it. Colton and I recently became scuba certified, which will come in handy later when we explore a massive coral reef and shipwreck near here. But for now, I'm pumped to go snorkeling. This is gonna be the first time we get to gaze underwater and see what kind of creatures are living down there. We're just 75 yards from the fort. You can see the remains of an old dock, but it's surrounded by coral. The coral reefs here at Dry Tortugas are incredibly unique. They've been growing here for 12,000 years. They make up part of the third largest coral reef in the world and are some of the healthiest anywhere in North America. What looks like just open ocean from above the surface is a city of fish and all kinds of creatures when you get down there. These little yellow guys are smallmouth grunts or banana grunts. They're named for the grunting sound they make when they rub their teeth together. Snorkeling's an absolute blast. And if you're not scuba certified, it's a great way to look into the underwater world. Snorkeling has whet our appetite for something we've never done before. But first... So, is this the nest? Our nest is actually right here where there's no tracks. We're lending a hand to help out the reptiles this park is named for. We're in the remote island paradise of Dry Tortugas National Park, 70 miles off the coast of Key West, Florida. We are off to Loggerhead Key to do a little sea turtle research in. Easily recognizable for its 150-foot-tall lighthouse, Loggerhead Key is the largest of the seven islands in the park and is named for the loggerhead turtles that have been laying their eggs here in the soft sand for generations. Sea turtles are living dinosaurs. They've been around for more than 100 million years. When they're active, they must swim to the surface every few minutes to take a breath. But when resting, they can remain underwater for up to two hours. Although five species of sea turtles are found near dry tortugas, loggerhead green and hawksbill turtles are the most common. Nearly all sea turtles are threatened or endangered, which is why biologists like Kayla Nimmo study and protect their nests. If you look right here, we actually Ooh. have some fresh tracks that are coming Ooh, off the beach wow. right here. Oh, you see yeah. that? Oh, you see yeah. these? Right wow. here. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. So this right here is actually a loggerhead turtle. You can tell it's a loggerhead turtle because the loggerheads they actually walk with an alternating gait, so they're left, right, left, right with okay. their gait. The greens crawl with a simultaneous gait, so they crawl with their front flippers, hind flippers all at the same time. Their track is very different. You know, I can tell the difference between a grizzly and a black bear track, <laughs> but the subtleties that the trained eye can pick up on that to us just looks like a hole is yep. unbelievable. Sea turtles have been known to travel thousands of miles a year, and yet they always return to the same exact beach where they hatch to lay their own eggs. So is this the nest? Her so nest is actually right here where there's no tracks. See, this whole time oh. I'm looking for a hole and it's a mound. So what the sea turtle does when she's nesting, she digs basically a light bulb shaped structure and into that she's going to start depositing her eggs. Wow. They usually lay about 100 eggs. With that many eggs out there from just one turtle, why is it that they're endangered right now? Well, they lay a lot of eggs. I mean, maybe 700 in a season. The survival rate is very low. Estimates are between one in 1,000 and one in 10,000 sea turtles will survive. That's because animals often dig up the eggs for an easy meal. And even when they make it out of the nest, the tiny hatchlings are only one to two ounces when they make their slow race to the sea and are easy prey to crabs, birds, and fish. So this nest that we just found this morning, we're gonna go ahead and mark that. I'm going to actually right. have you help me label these survey flags. So not only is that helpful for you to be able to find it, but also it'll alert other people that there is a clutch there. Exactly. A clutch is another name for the group of eggs that the turtle lays. The eggs in this nest will hatch in about 55 days. 
Because of efforts like these to protect nests around the world, the population of all sea turtles is making a dramatic comeback. Since the moment we got to dry tortugas, I have not been able to take my eyes off of this water. That's because we did a little preparation before this trip, so we're able to explore this park in a whole new way. It's time to go scuba diving. I got certified about a month ago, and it was a way to work through my slight fear of the ocean. Jack got to do his certification in the Pacific Ocean. I had to do mine in a lake. But today, I get to finally go into the ocean. I can't wait to see what this is like. We're going to explore a shipwreck located off Loggerhead Key at a depth of 25 feet. This iron-hauled ship called the Windjammer sank in a storm in 1907, and over the last 100 years has become an artificial reef that we're gonna check out with Captain Jack Jordan. So what can we expect down well, there? When you go down there, there is a resident uh, Goliath grouper that lives down there. He's quite big. He's probably as big as you are. Oh, wow. Yeah. D docile, right? Very docile. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see definitely barracudas, black grouper. Right. You might see the occasional nurse shark. So it's kind of a thing, if we're down there just observing them, giving them some distance, they're not going to want to mess with us. No. The animals mess with you when you mess with them. So, all right, let's get suited up and let's go diving, huh? All right. All right let's yes. go, guys. With any new sport, it takes some time getting used to all the necessary gear and safety equipment. And I'm trying to put on this wetsuit, and even though this water is exceptionally warm, we might run into jellyfish, we might run into fire coral, things that if they touch you, it's not really gonna feel too good. So it's great to have a nice protective layer on you when you're diving. I can speak for both of us when I say we've been waiting for this an experience both of us have never had before. We both checked our air supply and made sure air is running through our regulators. You good? Yep. This confirms the tanks and valves are working properly and air will be flowing. We're ready to dive. Yes, we are. We're starting to move through the water. You see this dark, ominous figure starting to creep towards us. It was big. It was real big. We're in Dry Tortugas, 70 miles off the coast of Florida, about to explore a shipwreck on our first open water dive in a national park. So Colton and I descend down to about 25 feet, and as we're starting to move through the water, we spot a stingray, and this guy is huge. It's big. It's real big. He's just hanging out on the ocean floor, just kind of observing, you know, maybe he's checking out our dive technique. Stingrays spend most of their time buried in the sand using special electrical sensors that detect when their prey, such as clams, shrimp, and crabs are close by. Most stingrays like this one grow six and a half feet long from the tip of the tail to the head. Their barbed tails are armed with venom only for defense. So as long as you keep your distance, there's no reason not to watch them swim around. It's so cool. As much as we'd like to keep following this guy, one of the biggest challenges underwater, especially for novices like us, is keeping track of time and deciding where to go next. With only so much air, it's time to turn back and check out the shipwreck. So we approach the Windjammer, and I can see so many things that I want to explore. The Windjammer wreck was discovered in 1971, more than 60 years after it sank. The iron hulled ship split in two, but the 100-foot bow remains somewhat intact. Today, coral covers parts of the ship's remains, and other pieces are buried in the sand. To not only see this massive 260-plus-foot ship at the bottom of the ocean, but to also get to swim through it like a fish, so awesome. Just think, there are over 275 wrecks here in Dry Tortugas alone. And when you consider that 95% of the seafloor is unmapped, it's mind-boggling how much more there is to discover. Colton and I are having a blast, kicking around through this wreck, checking out fish. The striped fish are called Sergeant Majors. You might have seen similar fish in an aquarium before. These blue tang are sometimes called blue doctors because of the razor sharp spines like scalpels on either side of their tail. Definitely do not touch. It can take coral colonies hundreds or even thousands of years to grow into a full reef, 
but they can be destroyed quickly under any physical stress, like being kicked or even touched. There are 30 different species of coral in the park, and I'd say we're seeing about a dozen of them right now. At least. I mean, all these different colors, red, purple, brown, and with that, different fish who are calling these unique places home. Corals attach themselves to the ocean floor like a plant might do, but they're actually animals. They feed on microorganisms in the water, and they are host to an algae called zooxanthellae, which gives them their wild colors. Staghorn are branching corals that grow fast in order to gain more space on the reef. Sea fan corals are softer and tend to anchor themselves in the mud or sand. When you're first going into the ocean, the thought of a shark, you're scared of it, you know, you are. But when you get comfortable and you're just having fun, you kind of want one to swim by. Nurse sharks are very common in the tortugas, but these bottom dwellers are one of the most laid back sharks out there. They spend most of their time chilling on the soft sand, earning them the nickname, the couch potato sharks. They're harmless to humans unless you accidentally step on one or bother them. So we're down on the bottom, just having a blast exploring the wind jammer. And I look over, and Jack is following these little fish. But right in front of him is a massive Goliath grouper. I didn't see him. He's camouflaged extremely well and had no clue he was even there. But I'm glad Colton got my attention and we got to check him out. Goliath grouper can grow up to eight feet long and weigh up to almost 800 pounds. This guy's probably about a third that size, but still. That guy is hard to miss. <laughs> that is maybe the biggest fish I've ever seen that close in my life. The, just the mouth on him. As we're exploring, I look over and I spot what looks like a lionfish. Definitely want to keep a safe distance from these guys. If he sticks one of his barbs in you, ooh, it's bad news. A lionfish sting is rarely fatal, but it's incredibly painful. Worse yet, these fish are an invasive species here. They were most likely dumped into the gulf by people who kept them in aquariums. Lionfish have no natural predators, and because they gobble up reef fish, they could eventually destroy the coral reefs. Scientists are scrambling to figure out how to stop them. We're gliding along on the ocean floor, and then all of a sudden, Jack just stops, looks down, and just starts darting it towards the bottom. Jack and I are diving the Windjammer wreck in Dry Tortugas National Park, when all of a sudden, Jack just stops, looks down, and just starts darting it towards the bottom. Something catches my eye. It's bright yellow. This is the mouthpiece to a regulator. Somebody diving here before apparently lost it. If I see trash, I'm gonna pick it up because we all have to do our part to preserve these places and keep them clean. Well, our air's getting low, and I think it's the time to ascend to the surface. This has been a great dive and an awesome reminder that there's so much more to explore out there. Woo! That was awesome! Yeah, that was so cool! What an amazing adventure. I can't pick a favorite thing from this trip. From touring the fort and snorkeling, and then sea turtles. To diving? Yeah. Everything was new, and it completely blew me away. 99% water? It's hard to fathom a national park that's made up of that much water. These parks will continue to surprise you. You think you know what the national parks are like, and then you come to a place like Dry Tortugas. This place is so spectacular. Every turn is just something new and we barely touched the surface. For us, Dry Tortugas National Park was the perfect spot to dive into the wonders of the underwater world. And remember, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park.
everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.